Usta is a 4x4 track variable stage length sequencer. In this definition, there is pretty much anything you need to know to understand its functioning. Let's see what it means. First, a sequencer is a device that outputs a series of control voltages, timing pulses or both. On a sequencer, we must define every voltage and gate, thus creating a sequence of values, hence the name. A sequencer continuously moves from a value to the next one in a given time, which is often set by a clock signal, and it can repeat the sequence infinitely. USTA is like four sequencers, each of which can output four different values at the same time. This is where USTA outputs our CV and gate sequences. We have eight CV outputs and eight gate outputs. Every track controls two streams of CVs and two gates, whose values we define through the stages. A stage, then, contains four pieces of information, two CV values and two gate values. A sequence of up to 16 stages is called pattern. Every track has 32 patterns, for a total of 512 stages. The information stored in all the four tracks forms a project. This leads us to the concept of variable stage length. On classic analog sequencers, the rate at which we move from a value to another is fixed, like a clock impulse. On the USTA, every stage can have a different duration or a variable length, which we measure in time units. A time unit is the minimum length that a stage can have, and we derive it from the clock. Every stage length can span from 1 to 16 time units. We can also set a stage's length to zero, thus removing it from the sequence and making the pattern shorter. Let us put these concepts into practice and try to build our first sequence. As a rule of thumb, we designed the USTA so that you can edit your sequences content right from the front panel through 16 stage encoders and some buttons that you can combine to speed up the editing process. Every other setting which is not directly related to the sequence content is available in two menus, the track menu and the project menu, which we enter through the navigation encoder. Let us start by creating a new project. Push the navigation encoder for 3 seconds and enter the project menu, then initialize a new project. At this point, you may want to rename it and store it on USTA's SD card, which is on the back. Enter the project menu again and select Save As, then use the navigation encoder to change its name. If you accidentally enter a wrong letter, push the navigation encoder again to cancel it. Once you are done, press play to save. First, let's make sure that this pencil LED is red. This means that we are editing the stage content. It is a destructive editing process that can change how actually our sequence should sound. Let's select the track that we want to edit by pushing this button if it is not already selected. Now it is time to take a look at the dashboard. This is a brief recap of the most relevant details on what is going on. Let's focus on the first three rows for now. As of the current firmware, the first row shows the project name, the root node, and the scale we are using for quantization. More on quantization in the next videos. The second row shows if the clock is internal or external and its rate. Then we see the clock to unit ratio. In this case, it is one to one, meaning that the shortest possible stage that we can have is equal to a clock pulse interval. By default, the clock is set to 120 BPM for all the tracks. If we push play, we can see a playhead moving exactly at 120 BPM, like a metronome. If we need faster notes, like 16 notes, but still within 120 BPM, we need to work on this very parameter, and we will do that in a minute. We can push other track buttons and see that all the tracks are in sync. Push again the play button to pause the sequence and the reset one to bring all the tracks to the beginning. There are also more advanced uh, play and reset functions, but we will see them in later videos. Let's continue our dashboard overview. This is the swing percentage, and this is the total pattern length expressed in time units. By default, it is 16, since we have 16 stages of one time unit each. The third row shows the pattern information. We have the pattern we are seeing, the pattern that is currently playing, and the pattern loop duration. This information is essential because with USTA we can edit a pattern that is not currently playing. Right now, everything is set to pattern 1. Before writing the sequence, we need to make a couple of choices. Which is our composition tempo? Is the clock internal or external? And which is the shortest stage duration? Let's then push the navigation encoder once to enter the track menu for the track we are using. 
and define the BPM, for example, 130. With firmware 155, we also introduced decimal values for the clock, but we don't need them right now. Then, we need to define the ratio. If we leave it to 1 to 1, the shortest note that we can have is a quarter note. If we plan to go down to 16 notes, for example, we must set the ratio to 1 to 4, so that every clock in pulse can contain 4 notes. If we go back to the dashboard, we can see that the number have updated. If we play our sequence, it will be faster. But now, let's select another track. It's no longer in sync. It is still left to 120 BPM and 1 to 1 time ratio. The reason is that with Usta, we can have all the tracks running at different ratio or even BPM. It is really like having four separate sequencers. Still, it is always possible to apply any track menu setting to all the tracks. It is time to introduce the Set All button. It is the first of the three mod buttons which help making the editing process super fast. If we hold the Set All before setting any menu preference on any track, the setting will apply to all the four of them. There, now everything is in sync. Ok, now let's set up a simple patch. CVA of track 1 controls brain source pitch, gate A fires an envelope that controls its amplitude. We are using the final output because we may need some timbral variety later on. There are three ways to edit the stage values. When Usta is paused, when it is running or in composition mode. Let's select the track 1 and the gate A channel. Now the stage encoder shows what values we are entering. Rotate them clockwise to change the nodes. We can see the new values both on the dashboard and on the stage arc. One LED is a semitone. When we reach 11 semitone, we hit the B note by default. And if we keep rotating, we go back to C, which is zero LED, but with an extra LED on the right. That means that we are an octave higher. Keep rotating until you find the note you like. If you want to set all the stages to a higher value, hit the set all button we just used while rotating an encoder. The new setting will apply to all the following ones. If you want to transpose a stage by a whole octave, hold the course button. You can combine it with set all to transpose all the stages. We can also edit the sequence while playing, so let's push the play button. Wait, no sound. That is okay. We need to also enter some gates to open our envelope. The reason why Usta doesn't automatically populate the gate layer while changing the notes in CVA is that it allows you more freedom. You can use the gate tracks for other purposes, and you can use the CVE as a raw voltage generator, for example, thus not outputting volt per octave signals. In addition to that, you don't technically create nodes on CVA, you just define a value that is already there. The gate value defines its duration. When it is set to 0, the gate will be low for all the stage length. When it is set to 16, it will tie to the next one. Playing with gate values is an excellent way to add dynamics and groove to our sequence. And here's our sequence. Now we can appreciate what happens when we change the stages length. You can hear that the gate length increases accordingly because it is proportional to the stage length. You can always keep an eye on the length number on the dashboard, which will show if our pattern has an odd length. While changing a stage's length, you can hold the course button to compensate the change towards the following stage and thus keep the overall pattern duration steady. find a pattern that we like, but we feel that it starts uh, offbeat, we can always uh, rotate it. Push and hold the track button, then rotate the navigation encoder. But what if we want to transpose our sequence? We can use the last mod button, the shift all. It works just like the set all, so we can transpose all the stages after the current one, up and down, by the same interval. We 
can even combine it with the course button to transpose the sequence up and down by octaves. The third way to edit the content of our stages is through composition mode. Let's make sure that the track is stopped and that we are in edit mode. Let's then double click the track button to enter the composition mode. Now Usta sends a gate high signal to all the tracks and plays the currently selected stage. We can select the stage by rotating the navigation encoder. It can be helpful to carefully define the content of our stages and make sure that we don't hit the wrong notes. When in composition mode, any information about scale and root is suspended since Usta's quantization is non-destructive, but we will get into that in another video. While we are here, we can define every CV or gate value. Of course, we cannot hear how the gates will sound like until we play the sequence since in composition mode the gate is always high, but we can experience the CV change in real time. At this point, we may want to add some dynamics to our sequence, for example by changing the timbre of some notes. This is why we use the final output. For this purpose we can use the CVB. By default it outputs raw voltages, or unquantized. We can change this setting via track menu. Let's then patch it to Brainsos Wave Folder CV input. In this way we can assign a different timbre to every stage. By default, the voltage increments are 50 mV. We can hold the course button to jump by 0.5V increments, or hold ESC beforehand and access the fine-tune function. In this way, we can define our voltage down to the mV. Once we are ready, we can double-click the track button again, or simply press play. Remember that by default Usta is paused. If we want to play our sequence from the beginning, we must push the reset button first, which brings all the tracks to the first stage of the pattern loop. We can also take advantage of the second gate output to add some accents by pinging the brain saw. Let us then select the gate B layer and create another pattern. And this is our first Usta sequence. Pretty nice. There is a lot more to uncover, like working with multiple tracks, randomizing our sequence and improvising with our pattern loop structure. But we will cover these topics in the next video tutorials, so stick around and see you next time.